All right, guys, I just wanted to provide an update for the humble stairs thing. Uh, script, geometry, nodes, modifiers, setup. So the first thing that I wanted to provide was a, an update to the last thing, uh, which is the stair angle finder. So you remember uh, the last one. There's a whole big mess over over here for finding the angle, and it turns out that was all unnecessary. You can just use a less than angle. So you take the vector, the normal vector, and you just say what angle you can use. Um, and then uh, if it's less than that, you compare it to the, the vertical vector. So that's just z of 1. And uh, if the angle is less than that, then you get the thing. Otherwise, do the other thing. So so much simpler. It actually works better because the other one I was doing piecewise and it wasn't handling um, wasn't handling some of these cases properly. And now you can see it very nicely finds the angle from vertical for all this stuff. So that is great. Then uh, the other thing I wanted to do was one of my friends was like, hey, I'll bet it uses, uh, I told him, you know, the idea of this thing. He's like, oh, does it use splines? I was like, well, no, it's just, it's just meshes. You could, you could use splines, I guess. But uh, I didn't set it up for splines, so so I, I bit the bullet and set it up for splines. Um, so the first thing I had to, to solve was the basic um, array modifier doesn't give you an exact length. It, it doesn't deform the length of it to fit the curve exactly. So this curve uh, would be jaggedy. So anyway, I, I set up a, a thing so that it always hits the end exactly, um, no matter no matter how long the curve is and no matter how coarse your grid is, you can change your your grid size and it it always hits the ends on both ends. So that's really handy. Um, but then the next thing I did was this is a real pain to to set up because you've got your you've got your base mesh. Let's turn off solidify, turn off stair tread. Um, so you've got your base mesh. It generates it. Oh, let's let's look at how that does that. That's this is pretty simple. This is like baby's first geometry nodes. But um, actually, we're going to get to that later. The real baby's first geometry nodes is later. But this one is pretty straightforward. It's got a curve. It takes the uh, curve geometry, it finds the length of that curve, and then it divides that um, by your target size, and then it sets a, a minimum, it sets a, a maximum value of a thousand so that you don't end up with a hundred thousand and almost crash blender like I did. And then uh, it also sets a maximum, which is a minimum, of two so that you don't end up with zero, so you'll always have at least one square. Uh, and then it just makes a grid with that size of one, and uh, the well, no. So the the X, the Y size is one. The X size is the length of the curve, and then it offsets it by half of the X value of the length of the curve, and that makes it meet up with the curve nicely. Uh, so it does that? Then it applies the curve to it. But now we've got this exact curve curve thing, which is our base mesh. So with all these other ones, we could just do stair treadify directly on the base mesh because the base mesh was this thing. But now we don't have that. And also we don't have a way to get the ends on it. Um, so like if I if I try to copy some of these stair stuff over to here, um, I'll just delete these. So I've got this base thing. I can copy this, copy to selected, and I can copy this to selected, so now we've got our stairs, but then I want my rails, so I can take this and uh, duplicate it, I guess, and then, actually, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do the whole thing at once. See, this, and this, and this, there. So we're gonna duplicate it, and then we're gonna snap it all to this object I guess um, and then we're gonna link it to the base mesh although link object data doesn't really matter because that's a giant old plane or something 
Um, so now we have to get these curve things in. And so we'll just hide everything else. So now you got to manually take, because if you just, if you just copy everything, uh, link, copy modifiers, now you just get a bunch of copies of that thing. So that doesn't help. So you have to go in here and say this thing, uh, let's see, we're gonna do all, and then we're gonna uh, exact curve. So then we have to copy this to selected, and then we have to copy the curve modifier to selected. And so now I've got all that, but now I've gotta take all these and move them to the base of the thing. So it's just, it's a real pain. It's a real pain. And, uh, and so I didn't want to do any of that. So instead, what I did is um, I, I, I used my favorite geometry nodes trick, which is the clobber node. It's not actually a node. What it does is you say, whatever this geometry is, throw it away, and then uh, take some collection that you select from the menu over here and realize all its instances, just take all the original stuff, realize the instances, run a merge by distance with a distance that you can select, and then that's your geometry output. So then all of these have the same base clobber geometry thing. And uh, now we've got some group somewhere over here that we can mess with and uh, it takes all that stuff. And so that's not particularly impressive. It, it makes it nice for, for uh, copying stuff over because then if you copy this stuff, you can just say, uh, say we want to select all these and we want to apply this to this other group. We just uh, go here and say stair one and then say copy to selected and now we're using stair one instead. So that's nice. But the even cooler thing is that you can have multiple objects. So here I've got a curve set up with my exact curve curve thing, but the curve that it is targeted to, if I can ever select it, has some hooks on it so that it's hooked to these end objects. So now these all get merged together. These are all separate meshes, but the clobber, because it merges it together, is if we set this merge way down, you can see it, it splits those out. But it, since we merge it, then uh, we can have this whole thing be one mesh. So it, it has a contiguous thing from, from one end to the other. So that is really, really nice. Let's move this over here so we can see what we're doing better. And uh, so that's just, that's just fantastic. And you can rotate this thing. Well, Z, maybe like that. And... Uh, all the all the ramp stuff gets gets done. It converts from ramps to stairs and back again really nicely, and uh, it's it's just lovely. So that is a really fun. And then of course you can modify your your curve here. So uh, maybe we can subdivide. Let's see. Segment subdivide. There we go. And, you know, put a thing out here. We want to do a wonky thing. Who knows? So, there we go. And it all, it all matches up nicely. So you can have your crazy spline thing. And, of course, it works spline by itself and you can use the radius of the curve as well so I think it's uh, all. control s no alt s alt s to scale so you can see there it's scaling this thing up and down to make it wider and narrower just lovely and another great thing it does is that it resets all the scale of things. So this is scaled by the Y by some value. 
but uh, the ultimate geometry ends up just being the scale of, of one. So you can use it to reset scale on stuff, do scaling and rescaling. Uh, like I said, we could let's uh, let's do something fun. Let's add like a little a little annex off the top of this thing here. So we're just going to take this, copy that, uh, maybe come over here. Let's see. There we go. And put this over here. And uh, let's subdivide this. Snap these onto these. And we should, if we did this properly, now have, yes, a little thing that's connected to it over here. So uh, just lovely, just lovely functionality. So this is a great way to make large structures, large things, and then maybe, I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can modify this. Yeah, it's gonna miss a line in the middle. It's gonna miss a line in the middle here, occasionally, um, but it's not too bad. So if you're careful, you can get it to line up again, and then you know that works out too. So just really fun. And of course, all this stuff is still working like you'd expect. So after the clobber geometry, we've got decimate and edge isolate and all that stuff. Oh, so one other thing I added or a change from how it worked before is uh, I took out the mask and put the mask inside the railing handrail. So you can see we've got the mask open edges in here now. And I did that not because it wasn't working for, uh, for meshes, which it does just fine. And, and these are all meshes, but because it didn't work for curves, you can't add a mask modifier to a curve node and you need curves for these spiral staircases. So these are actually curve objects. Now, they didn't need to be curve objects because I'm throwing away all the geometry. I'm not actually using the geometry at all. So the geometry inside here isn't actually doing anything, but uh, I wanted you to be able to to do the stuff on curves too if you wanted to make a curve thing. Uh, let's just do an example here. Let's add um, a curve circle. And we're going to fill it. Um, let's see. Fill mode. Front. No. Geometry. Uh, foot caps? No. How do we get this to to fill in? Well, anyway, we've got uh, we've got this Bezier thing, and now we should be able to add the geometry nodes uh, railing handrail. Oop. And it's not working. Hmm. Can we just copy these? Control L. Copy modifiers. Oh, but now we've got clobber on there. Okay, well. There we go. It's isolated rail here now. Yeah, I'm not sure why it, why it did that, but there we go. So now we can uh, 
duplicate this and get the posts. going wrong there. Anyway, uh, you can always use the clobber thing to get it to work. Uh, there and there. Uh, plane. All right. So anyway, spirals. Let's look at spirals. So these were really fun to work on. Uh, the base thing is a geometry nodes that does the spiral stairs. And then it's got uh, all the all the other modifiers on there. So you've got your edge isolate and your railing posts and your edge isolate and your railing handrail and your edge isolate and some weld and your toe plate and solidify. So it's all the same stuff from before. Um, you can take these and move them up and down same as before and they have the right endings on them so that they match up all this stuff. All this stuff works as you'd expect, but this is procedurally generated, so you can go up here to your spiral stairs and uh, mess with the spiral stairs. So now be sure to hold down Alt when you modify these, because otherwise you'll just be modifying one. You won't be modifying the whole thing. But uh, yeah, you can make a bunch of rotations. You can make them less rotations. You can make uh, more or less treads and you can make uh, higher and lower height. Total height is in here somewhere, as you'd expect. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, and, and then of course the inner and the outer radius are modifiable as well. So you can see that these are, these are not just, these are not just normal, you know, straight up spirals or whatever. They're, they're complicated things. But you'll, something you'll notice is that these, let's uh, let's make it a little more exaggerated here. I'll do that and like that. All right. So you can see that these are getting a little bit skewed here. They're, they're, not, they're not lining up properly. And so uh, that you can adjust with these skew values. Again, holding down Alt, you can line up some more of this skew so that it fixes that a bit. It doesn't fix it perfectly, but it fixes it to a degree. And uh, same thing with the height. Um, with this one, it's not too bad, but sometimes you'll have uh, the need to do some sag. So like that's what it would look like by default. And so you do some inverse sag so that the, the slope of all these steps, the tread, uh, the tread height ends up a little better. So there you go. That's the, the functionality, how you use it. Now let's look at what's going on under the hood here. So this is a bit more complicated than I would prefer, but it's actually not that complicated. It's basically just using two sample curves and then the sample curves have a few RGB curves on them to adjust the sag and then uh, We've also got the height setting with a few RGB curves to do this height setting. And the rest of this is stuff to get the ends to line up properly because I wanted it to be able to put on the mask. Uh, so that's this store named attribute here. And the name comes from the ends. So that's set to open edges. If we set this to edges, um, then, well, mm, well, uh, edges is, is, um, copy to select it. There we go. So, uh, then it, it won't cut the ends off because that value doesn't match up. 
with this value. So that's why I selected. That's why that's in there. And yeah, that's basically it. It's just a it's just a spiral. Uh, it's just one of these spiral curve objects uh, with the height of one, and then it does the height later, it scales the height up later. And uh, yeah, the the inside and the outside get mapped to the curve. We don't have to go over all the details here. You you guys don't care. Um, again, this is all on my GitHub. All this stuff has been uploaded. The Humble Stairs has been updated on there. So when you get in, you will be able to play with all of this as you desire to your heart's content. So uh, you can, yeah, you can do all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff. Let's see. <laughs> Let's make this a little higher. Uh, height. And then we gotta, gotta adjust the skew a bit. Maybe like that. There we go. It's pretty good. Yeah. And then maybe uh, a bit more sag, too. There we go somehow also modifying this one. So maybe we can just copy So many spiral stairs. And let's uh, decrease the cut there so that it's all connected up properly. So cool. So 